Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today we're going to uh, teach you how to reassemble a Crossman 357 pistol. Now, this is one that came in for repair, so I thought I'd do a video on it, because uh, a lot of guys have been asking me about, you know, how do you put these things back together? I got it into a big pile of parts, and I don't know what I'm doing. And So anyway, um, I didn't want to take one of my own guns apart to do this, because as soon as you disturb the side cover, what happens is the quad seals that sit on this brass pipe end up they're gonna leak okay so uh, about nine times out of ten they do develop a leak uh, sometimes really fast sometimes you know it may take another week um, so don't be pulling your gun apart um, unless you're pulling it apart to actually repair the gun and you have the seal kit and then you're okay but otherwise don't pull your gun apart for any reason okay and if you don't know what you're doing please don't pull it apart just you know send it to somebody who can fix it like me or somebody else whoever um, you know, and get it put back together properly and with all new seals. Now, one of the reasons I, I know some guys take their guns apart is because it doesn't index properly. Now, this is the face plate here, and what's missing from here is actually the spring plate that the indexing prawl uh, rides in, and I'll show you on a new one here. This is our, our new one to replace, and you'll notice this has the spring plate. And this is just a fine, uh, very fine, very thin plastic plate, so you don't want to pull up on this. You want it to have, work under its own natural pressures, okay? The other thing you might have to order is a new nozzle. Uh, the nozzle on this gun is worn right out, so we're going to have to put a new nozzle in here too. Um, so let's get started with putting this thing back together. We're going to start with the trigger. So we're going to take our trigger spring here like this, and we're just going to put it off in to the side so it sits kind of like that. Make sure your pins are in too, by the way, for your hammer, your sear, and your trigger. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your trigger, and this is the mechanism that actually fires the gun. Okay? Um, I know one guy said on a video he th thought it was some sort of a safety, but it's not. Um, it's actually what fires the gun when the hammer hits it. It hits the stem, and then it fires. So what you're going to do is put that in here, and this is the where it gets a little tricky. Get that right in like that. So you want the spring to sit on this side of the spring, or on this side of the trigger. So then you're going to fold up and over the front of your spring, and it just sits in just like that. Now we have a working trigger. Then make sure you've got the hammer bar rested up against here where it is. Next, you're going to install your hammer. Now, don't take this apart in here um, because there's a spring in here and you don't want to lose it. Uh, but if you do take it apart, make sure you don't lose the spring. And that's going to go right back in just like that. Okay? Next part is going to be our sear. And our sear just rides like this. you got to make sure that it sits where it's going to move. Okay, so that's going to move good. Now the sear spring is actually going to be our next part. Uh, now to, per, to position this, if you have another 357, you can do this, but if not, um, it might be a little tricky. But it's got to stick out at the bottom when the spring is in there. Okay, so your sear actually sticks out through the bottom here. So when you cock the gun, it comes up against Hammer pushes it, or the trigger pushes into the sear and fires the gun. So next is our spring for our sear. Now this can sometimes be a little tricky, so what I like to do is take a little pair of pliers, go into one of the coils, just like this, and then I'll feed it in. Just like that. And yep, our sear works. So that's all good. So now we're going to move this out of the way. Now we've already got the valve apart. Now this particular type of valve has a screw in brass nut. And you need a special tool to get that out and get it seated back in properly with the right amount of tension. So you need a tool that looks like this. Now I had to make mine because Crossman doesn't sell these tools anymore and they haven't in years. So, and I actually know how to make quite a few of these. So. Um, if you're going to be a DIYer, you're going to need this tool for not just this gun, but many Crossman guns that have the same type of nut. So, 
Anyway, um, let's get on with rebuilding this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our O-ring back in that goes into the front of the valve. Now, you're going to want to put a little bit of oil on this. So what I do is I put a little bit of oil on my finger. And then I just put the O-ring into the oil, like so. And then we just drop her down the hole. And then you want to have it sitting right in like that. Okay? The next is this pressure washer that goes up against it. Now some of these are directional, some aren't. This one is not directional, and you'll know if it's directional because it'll have a recess on the top. So it has to go back in downward, okay? So facing the front of the valve if you have one with a recess. So we just put that back in, like so. We're going to take the hammer spring or the return spring, push that in, make sure it's seated. Good, it's nicely seated. So you want to seat it firmly by pushing down on the valve stem and the return spring so that it seats it in there. Okay, so got that done. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our valve stem seal in. Okay, this is a new seal, and if you got to take your gun apart, you might as well re place everything because your stem seal wears out. This is the worn out one and as you can see it's got a nice deep impression in there and that actually starts to slow the gun down as it gets deeper and deeper. Okay so and whenever you get a rebuild kit for seals you always get a valve stem seal so. So the next thing we do is we just pop that in place like that. That's going to sit there. Now, some of these guns will have a secondary block O-ring that's needed, some don't, this one doesn't. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put that back on. And then we're just going to start screwing it together carefully with our fingers. Because you don't want to cross thread anything. Now we take our tool, and this is why you need this tool, because it has a hollowed uh, center in it, so that the valve stem can go through. You're just going to tighten that up. I'm going to check, make sure everything's functioning. It's all good. That basically sits flush with the top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test fit, make sure it went in fine. Good, we got proper clearance. We're all good to go. All right. Now let's put our bottom CO2 cap together. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put in a new new screen. This keeps contaminants out of your gun. So put the new screen in, just like that. Then we're going to take our, our 38128 end seal, and we're going to put a little bit of oil on this. Put it on the bottom there. And then we're going to put a little bit around the top here. Oh, wait, we can't do that yet, sorry, my mistake. Okay, piercing cap, sorry about that. Piercing cap goes in, and our seal. We've got a wheel on both sides already. Then, we take our threaded on cap. Now we don't, we're not going to put this on tight tight because we want to make sure that it's going to go back into the frame rest properly and then we'll snug it up later, okay? So you don't want to put that on tight tight right away, but you want to put it on and make sure that it's all threads in good so you have no problems. Okay, so we'll just back that off a bit. Okay, now back to the frame. 
Another crucial part of this gun is for indexing is this little wee bushing. Okay, now this one's in brass. They made them, I think they still do them in brass too, but um, you'll find some guns have them in brass, some have a little nylon bushing. The nylon bushings do wear out, so if you're ordering parts, um, ask the person uh, to make sure that there's a brass one in there if you don't have one already. So check your gun first. The brass ones aren't going to wear out anytime soon. They'll last for several rebuilds, but the nylon ones, every time you rebuild it, usually you do the nylon one because it's usually pretty worn. And that goes right in there like that on the hammer. Okay, now the next thing uh, we're going to do here is we're going to put the valve into the face plate. Now make sure your nozzle spring is in here. Make sure your nozzle is protruding out like this. Okay. And then you just pop that right in like so. Now what I like to do first is make sure that everything goes into lock up properly and my face plate is rotated in the right spot. This saves some problems later. Okay, so that's all good. Now, put that back up. Another thing that can mess up your indexing is the indexing prowl. Now on this particular gun, the tip itself was still good, but the lobe here has a chunk into it, so that has to be replaced. So we'll, that's gonna be after. Now, uh, make sure your fingers are oil free. Wipe them down good. Now the next is going to be your brass pipe with your quad seals. Okay. Um, I've already installed these so you want to install them just like this first. You do not put any oil on these quad seals at all. If you do you'll blow them right back out. Um, it can happen. I've done it a few times before and then I learned you don't put oil on there. These are things you learn as you go. You know, so everybody's a beginner once in their life. Now, what you want to do is you want to carefully push these in here, like so. And this is a one-shot deal. Okay, that one's seated in. Now, the next one we got to seat in is this one in here. And then that goes like that. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is we've got to get our hammer spring in here. So I'll lift this out of the way. Now remember what direction the hammer spring goes in. If you don't remember, you can go to your computer if you've got the print for this. And you can pull up your print. Now Crossman does have the prints online so you can easily get the prints. And we want Crosswind guns, 357. Rotate view. And our hammer spring shows. And our hammer spring shows it goes in like so. Okay, so here's where it gets a little tricky. You gotta get that hammer spring seated up first. So drop it in like this. And then push up like so. Make sure that rotates and locks into place. We're all good. Awesome. Okay. Now one thing we should have done earlier, we'll do it now though, is put the safety back in. So if you forget, you can still do it.
go this way. Okay, so safety's in. your trigger spring can start popping on you a little bit so okay that's all in good that's in good and our hammer spring decided to push its way down so there we go back in It's all set to go. So next thing we want to do, oh, we've got to check our sear here. Yeah, it's still all right. Good, good. Now the indexing bar. That goes on just like that. Okay. Now your indexing prowl. You got to carefully feed this in. Like so. Okay. Seated. Good, good. Um, latch support. Well, the latch. Latch goes in. And somewhere around here, I got a latch support boot. We're going to need it. Oh, there's our latch support boot. Now, this is the fun part. Looks like a little wedge. Okay. A lot of guys wonder which way it goes in. It goes in usually just this way. Okay, so with the wedge cuts facing up, like so. And you just <clears throat> jam that in there. And if you look at your print and you look at the wedge, it shows you the direction it goes in. And yep, it's definitely incorrectly. So we got it incorrectly. It's good. Now, let's put it on the faceplate. Just like that. Grab our screws. And if your face plate goes on that nice, then or side plate, then you know you got it right. Everything should be seated properly. You don't have to torque the hell out of these screws. Just go to they stop and just a little snugness. Now we got all that together. Our bars 
moving up. Comes into the valve, good. Everything's working there. And when it's cocked, that's nice and stiff, so that's good. It means it's going to index good. And it's got pressure here, so that's all good. So now we've got to tighten down our collar here. Just tighten down as, as, hard, as tight as you can with your fingers. And then you're going to need a screwdriver or, if you can, a blade. And you're going to go in, you're going to snug this. Just like that. And that should be good. Now, if we did our job correctly, then uh, it should hold gas. And I know we got some oil on here anyway, but I want to get some into the valve. Another thing is if your gun starts to develop um, a leak, um, most commonly it's going to start here first, okay, a lot of the times. Um, but if it does start to leak here, snug it up only with your fingers. Don't snug it up with a pair of pliers because that's when you can actually damage this unit in here and that's not going to be cool. So when you're tightening it, even for a new fresh bottle, just like so. That's it. Yeah, looks like we're good to go. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next video.